Well, welcome again to Camp Hope Amy Church, located at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. I'm Reverend Dr. Michael Martin. I'm the pastor, and I am your Bible study instructor today. Amen. It's good to see you out again with us to study. To show yourself approval, workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And remember, as our motto goes, come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds as we prepare for Christ's return. We just thank each and every one of you that has been supported, uh, supportive to us. Amen. Thank you for tuning in on Sunday mornings. Amen. At 930. Amen. Thank you for for viewing our Sunday school that we now offer as well as here on Bible study. We just thank you. We thank all our virtual members who've decided to join us. Amen. And remember, as a virtual member, you don't have to live here and make it. Amen. You'll be covered by us. Amen. You have all the lights, the rights, and the benefits of being a member here. We'll send you information uh, for everything that we do. Amen. So you're welcome, welcome, welcome to become a part of our virtual family. We also thank our covenant members. Amen. They come and they support us in everything that we do. Amen. We just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And remember, everything that you give, you have to do is designated if you want it for a designated uh, particular thing. And amen, we use it for that and that only. We thank you for your, your support. We know that God is using you to help us. We just wait to hope you realize that God is allowing you to be God's hands, God's resources, God's helps, even God's prayers for our ministry. And we just thank you. Thank you. Of course, we thank you for all our friends out there, all those that tune in with us. Amen. Even the ones that are just clicking by. Amen. And watch it for a little while. Amen. We thank you. We thank you for all the correspondence you've been sending us in, the testimonies that you've been sending us in. We've been praying for you. Amen. Remember, if you have special prayer requests, send that in to us as well. All right. This Wednesday, we're going to continue with our study in Deuteronomy. Amen. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Amen. So make sure you get your Bibles out. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go into prayer. Amen. God, we just thank you, we praise you, we glorify you for you allowing us to come to study to show us of approval. If we've done anything in thought, word, and deed that would hinder you from coming, we ask forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those that are here studying. Uh, please allow the Holy Spirit to come and teach and give revelation, give understanding, Lord. Bless all the ones that are tuned in, Lord, in a at this particular time, even later, if they come and check it out, we just thank you. We just thank you. Thank you. We have 10,000 tongues. Tongues, we can thank you now. We pray for our covenant members, our virtual members, our local members, each and every member, each and every friend, all those that assist us. We lift up before your throne of grace and merge say, bless, bless in a mighty way. This is our prayer. Again, we pray in the name of Jesus. And again, if we've done anything, and thought, what did they do? Any from moving, please forgive us. Cover us in the blood of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit come and teach and allow those out there listening to learn. We pray this in our son, in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Remember, we are in Deuteronomy chapter two, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. And I will be reading the NIV version. Amen. NIV version. Uh, of that particular scripture. Amen. Let us read. No one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the, the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden marriage, nor any of their descendants may enter the assembly of God, not even in the 10th generation. No Ammonites or Moabites or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the tenth generation, for they did not come to meet you with bread and water on your way when you came out of Egypt, and they hired Bal Balal, son of Bor Bor Beor, from Padath in Amron, uh, Naaram, to pronounce a curse on you, however. The Lord your God would not listen to Baal, but 
turn the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them as long as you live. Do not despise the Edomites, for the Edomites are related to you. Do not despise an Egyptian because you resided as foreigners in their country. The third generation of children born to you may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you are encamped against your enemies, keep away from everything impure. If one of your men is unclean because of uh, uh, nocul uh, amen, noculal emissions, he is to go out side the camp and stay there. But as evening approaches, he is to wash himself and at sunset, he may return to the camp. Amen. Let me read that again. Number nine, when you are encamped against your enemies, keep away from everything impure. If one of your men is unclean because of nocturnal emissions, he is to go outside the camp and stay there. But as evening approaches, he is to wash himself and at sunset, he may return to the camp. Designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. Um, for the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. If a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand him over to their masters, to their master. Let them live along among you uh, wherever they like and in whatever town they choose. Do not oppress them. No Israelite man or woman is to become a shrine prostitute. You must not bring the earnings of a female prostitute or a male prostitute into the house of the Lord for your God to pay any vow because the Lord your God detests them both. Do not charge a fellow Israelite interests, where, whether on the money or food or anything else that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but not a fellow Israelite, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hands to in the land you are entering to possess. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to pay it. For the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you retain, refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. Whatever your lips utter, you must be sure to do, because you made your vow freely to the Lord your God with your own mouth. If you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat all the grapes you want, but do not put any in your basket. If you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a shickle all to their standing grain. I read for you Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 through 24, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You are excuse me today. Amen. I'm making my way through. Amen. Let's start off. In the beginning, in verse as, uh, one, it's talking about eunuchs. Eunuchs are extended from uh, the congregation of Israel. Um, so who is a eunuch? Eunuch is uh, ones who have, uh, by crushing a uh, mutilation, uh, this refers to um, uh, emasculated by either birth or or by uh, defect or by accident or by deliberate emasculation. Um, when they talk about shall not enter the sin of the Lord, 
Uh, when we read this term, it usually refers to the nation gathering before God in worship, such as when they were gathering in Mount Sinai, not uh, when they were actually at the uh, place of meetings. Let us not get confused there. Uh, these uh, ex ex exclusions from the assembly of the Lord or exclusive or exclusions not from the religious life of Israel, but from the political life of the nation. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, Poole, uh, one of the theologians, suggests that the idea of the assembly of the Lord is the leadership or the rule of Israel. These people were barred not from the religious life of Israel, but from the political life of the nation. And when they talk about uh, shall not enter the assembly of God, it mean it shall not go in and out before the people as public officers, such as uh, mag magistrates or, or judges. They were forbidden to uh, do such things. Uh, if we go back uh, forward and read in, in Isaiah, and we will, verses uh, chapter 56, it shows that even eunuchs and foreigners could be accepted before the Lord if they would obey him. And they would be accepted before, you know, normal people, you know, whether they obey or disobey God at all. So it had nothing to do with necessarily uh, uh, worship or those things. So let us not. Uh, get that uh, confused. Uh, most eunuchs were made to be uh, eunuchs in, in, in a pagan ceremonies where uh, they were dedicated to pagan gods. So you have to think about it in that manner at, in, at that time. All right, verses two is talking about those of unknown parentage or, ex or excluded from assembling uh, of Israel, uh, that civil leadership in Israel. Now, uh, it is difficult to define exactly what this means. Uh, some uh, Jewish writers define this as someone who was born of in ancestral relationships between Jews. Others said it referred to those born of, of mixed marriages between the people of Israel and their pagan uh, neighbors. So uh, they were considered those who were uh, Ill illegitimate birth. Uh, verses three through six is talking about the Amorites and the Moabites are excluded from the congregation of Israel. Now this is, 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 is historic. We read about this earlier. The, the Moabites and the Ammonites are not only treat, uh, did not only treat Israel cruelly on their way to the promised land, but they also were a people with a disgraceful beginning. Uh, Moab and Ammon, uh, um, Ammon uh, were the two sons born to the daughters of Lot through their incest with their fathers. And we can go back and read that in Genesis chapter 19. Verses 7 and 8, where it talks about the Edomites and the Israelites. Excuse me, not Israelites, the um, uh, Egyptians. It, it says that the Edomites were, uh, uh, um, were kin to, uh, they were uh, uh, related to the Israelites because Israel's brother, who was Esau, was the father of the Edomite people. Therefore, Israel was commanded not to uh, despise them or hate them. Uh, other words, they used as a horde and particularly Edomite because they were actually a part of the family. And when it talks about the Egyptians, I know we go, oh, they were slaves, but the Egyptians were also to receive more favor than even the Moabites and the Ammonites because Israel was a guest in Egypt for almost 400 years. You say, yes, well, we must realize through the years Israel spent in Egypt, uh, they were hard, yes, but God had a great purpose for them. Uh, uh, Egypt was uh, like a mother womb for Israel. They went in as a large family and they came out 
as a distinguished nation. And remember, God had made a deal with, 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 with Abraham and told him this must happen, that he might become the father of many nations. So that's why God is saying this in this particular uh, part of the scripture in Deuteronomy. Uh, 19 through 14 talks about the cleanliness of the camp. Uh, God commanded ceremonial clean, cleanliness among the army of Israel. Uh, some occurrence in the night probably refers to the um, the uh, issue that they had during the nighttime, and which in the scripture they call it nocturnal emissions. And the uh, cleaning ceremony for this is described, of course, in uh, Leviticus chapter 15, if we go back. Uh, after observing the ceremony washing, he may come back into the uh, camp again. Of course, nocturnal emissions, of course, is uh, at night during their sleep, if they would, you know, semen would, would, would come forth uh, uh, involuntary uh, ejaculation. Uh, God commanded uh, sanitary cleanliness among the army of Israel. Each soldier was to carry a type of shovel with them, which he could cover his refuge. In other words, they had to go to the bathroom. God said, look, I need you to dig a hole, do what you got to do, then cover it up. Because if you don't do this, when I send somebody there to you, amen, they may turn away and we don't want them turned away because they're disgusted with your uncleanliness. Um, some ancient rabbis taught that the holy city of Jerusalem should be considered the camp of the Lord. Uh, under this reasoning, one had to go outside the camp to relieve oneself. However, um, for many people, the trip outside the large camp of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, was longer than what would be permitted on the Sabbath. Therefore, as a practice during that time, the, ra the rabbis prohibited a Jew from uh, relieving themselves on the Sabbath day. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Verses 15 through 16 talks about Israel uh, to provide um, asylum uh, for foreigners escaping from slavery. He says the refuge slave refers to uh, 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 had uh, uh, eventually come from a foreign land. It wasn't uh, necessarily had to do anything uh, with what was going on in the nation itself. Otherwise, there would have been legal uh, complications since slaves were valuable possessions uh, during that particular time. All right. Uh, verses 17 through 18 talks about a sacred prostitution uh, ban. When it talks about uh, the uh, ritual harlots and uh, and the uh, the the, the uh, male uh, harlots prostitutes, there this refers to female prostitutes. Uh, and uh, the in some version they call it perverted or male prostitutes refers to. Of course, male prostitutes, both of which were common among the pagan religions of the Canaanites and others in uh, the ancient world. So God said, "Look, don't need them. They're not. I don't. I don't want them uh, coming in and out of the temple. Nor do I want any money that was raised through them or by them to be given. Uh, the pay of a female prostitute." harlot and of course the pay of a male uh, were never to be offered to the Lord. Uh, they were common practice among the sacred prostitution the prostitution cults that abound in the ancient world. They actually used men and women to go out to prostitute themselves in order to raise money for uh, the pagan temples. All right, verses 19 to 20, it talks about uh, when uh, they loaned money. 
it 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 talks you so you 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 can't charge any interest to your brother mm -mm. interest um on concerning money or or even food uh the mention of food and the similar command of course if you go back to Exodus chapter 22 leads more understanding that interest was prohibited on loans made to the poor for their basic needs. And uh, it did not prohibit the taking of interest on loans that were not for relief of the poor. So they could do interests, interest on that, but not for uh, when the poor was asking to borrow money in order for the particular needs that they uh, needed to sustain themselves. And then God turned around and said, now, but for a foreigner, and but since merchants from other nations might come for business reasons to Israel or make loans on interest uh, to Israel, foreigners could be charged interest. Verses 21 through 23 it talks about uh, making a vow and the importance of keeping that vow uh, that you made. It says if a vow before God is, and vow, vowing before God is no small thing. God expressed his command that Israel should be careful to keep its vows and to fulfill uh, every oath that they make before God, because God will surely, will surely hold them accountable for that particular loan. But God says you do not loan, excuse me, vow. But God says you don't have to make a vow, but if you do, you're going to be held responsible for it. God never required vows. Uh, many times it is better not to make a vow. Right? Uh, when it talks about uh, that which have gone from your lips shall be kept and performed. When God says this, this shows how important it is to keep a vow once it's made. Uh, we can go back and read, uh, uh, go forward and read uh, Ecclesiastes about chapter five, where it says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. It is better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Many vows are, are just plain foolish. Uh, I'll never do that again is a foolish vow. And it is foolish and unwise to demand such a vow from someone else. So God says, look, you ain't going to do it, don't say you're going to do it. Because if if you say it, I'm going to hold you accountable. Then it goes on and it talks uh, in verse 6 about the rights to glean is given to travelers. Meaning not to go in there and shop and and, and take uh, crops to, to store in your home. Gleaning means when you go through there and you eat. Uh, the idea is that one... Uh, traveler, they have the right to pick off a few grapes or or heads of grain to eat along the way. It wasn't the right, it wasn't right though to harvest from your neighbor's field, but to provide for your own immediate need as you are traveling. So God was trying to take care of uh, God's people by setting up things, showing love, uh, showing understanding, showing um, different things, but also uh, trying to keep them straight as well. Amen. Don't want to cheat anybody. Don't want to put anybody in a particular place where they can't get themselves out. Reread this. Amen. Reread uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and C. Amen. As we go through again, uh, the Old Testament, uh, line by line, precept by precept, chapter by chapter, it is to build a foundation to show you what Jesus has done for us, praise God, uh, in uh, his sacrificing uh, for what we can and cannot do. Amen. Well, again, I thank you for joining us here at Camp Hope Amy Church, located 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. Tune in again with us Sunday, amen. We have Sunday school out there, amen. We have preaching out there. I, uh, you'll see me out there this Sunday, amen. So tune in, amen. Leave your comments, amen. If you want to be a part of our 
congregation covered by us, as well as a virtual member, we invite you to come forth. If you want to be a covenant member, we would love you to become a covenant member because we cannot do this without you. Local member, if you want to come and actually be in the place, come, 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 be a part of the local assembly. We thank our visitors, our friends, and everyone that is tuning in. And we are working on that website now that we can have uh, the whole service printed out and you can follow it uh, right along with us as we do what we do on that Sunday morning. Amen. Again, our motto is come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds as we prepare for Christ's return. Know that we love you with the love of Christ and as I say at every uh, meeting, amen, as we come and study, we will see you the next time. God bless you.